Done. Did it work? Yes. Okay. Let's record the loop. Okay. Keep scanning. Still recording. Got it. We will put it in slow mo. Hey, recap hour over here. Today, we will be summarizing a Spanish action thriller film called The Vault. Beware, spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. The story begins with the crew of Atlantis hunting for an unrivaled treasure in the depths of the ocean. After a long search, two divers uncovered a box containing the key to a fortune beyond expectations. Meanwhile, the Spanish government steps in and demands that the crew members surrender. James and Walter, two skilled treasure hunters, have been searching for this item for a very long time. Walter Moreland, the owner of a salvage company, has uncovered sunken wealth from a centuries-old shipwreck after years of work with his team of experts, but it has been confiscated now by the Spanish government. The massive hoard of riches is known as the Treasure of Guadalupe. Walter faces the Spanish judiciary at the International Court of The Hague. Because he didn't have a contract with an owner for the purpose of salvaging, he was accused of piracy. Walter intends to return with his treasure. As a result, Moreland and a crew of treasure hunters set out to penetrate the impregnable vault in order to recover the treasure. Walter had put together a team of outstanding people to help him achieve his goal. Lorraine, a con artist, Simon, a logistics expert, Klaus, a computer hacker, and James, Walter's long-standing treasure seeker, made up the team. Walter's team was unable to penetrate the vault security system, despite the presence of all of these talented individuals. As a result, Walter was on the hunt for someone who might be able to help him find a solution. And he found Thom, a genius engineering graduate from Cambridge University who was up for new challenges. Thom, being an idealist, turned down all of the high-paying offers he had received from various recruiters from major oil companies. His father, who is an oil executive, was irritated by it. Then, over dinner, he told him that he doesn't want the life that a career in an oil firm would offer him. During this conversation, he receives an anonymous text message from someone who has been watching him in the restaurant, instructing him to meet at a nightclub. Then he goes to the site where he was told to go and meets Lorraine, who introduces him to Walter. Walter extends a job offer to him. Walter reveals to him how sophisticated the vault's protection system is. If the vault is accessed without authorization, a trigger floods the room, drowning everybody inside. And no one has ever figured out how the thing works in the first place. To break into the bank of Spain's vault, containing the confiscated treasure, Walter needs Thom's engineering skills. However, breaking inside the vault appears to be impossible. The vault cannot be hacked, drilled, or tinkered with. It isn't called the world's safest vault for no reason. Furthermore, the bank is over a century old and does not have any blueprints. The security system is also quite sophisticated. As a result, Walter sends Thom's potential to decode the vault's mechanics. Walter further explains to Thom that the treasure is actually the coins of English sailor Francis Drake from the 15th century, which will give us the coordinates for a larger harvest of wealth. Thom decides to participate and joins them in Madrid during the 2010 FIFA World Cup, when Spain is vying for the championship. The group devised a scheme to divert attention away from the 2010 FIFA World Cup. It will be broadcasted across the country. There's also a large screen immediately outside the bank that will stream the game. Employees will be preoccupied with the game, allowing the team to enter the bank and carry out their plan. They made the decision to enter the vault through tunnels. Two physical keys and Gustavo Medina's fingerprint were required to open the vault, which is yet to be acquired. Thom desired to see the vault so that he could figure out how it works. To gain a better understanding of its structure, they opted to employ a magnetometer. Simon joins Thom at the bank as a maintenance worker. Lorraine, on the other hand, enters the bank as Claudia Valenti, an Italian art expert. Klaus uses video loops to manipulate the cameras. Meanwhile, Lorraine locates the keys and attempts to duplicate them using UV scanners. Thom heads to the basement floor to investigate what is beneath. He uses signals to figure out what's in the basement using magnetic readings. As a result of his astute intelligence, Thom deduces that the substance beneath the empty chamber is not solid, but rather liquid. 
But what is the apparatus that regulates the entire process of overflowing the empty chamber? Is the one question that remains unanswered. Given the vault's age, there were no motion sensors or other advanced equipment, so Thom used his amazing visualization to uncover that the vault lies beneath a big water reservoir on a massive scale. The vault overflows if the weight on the scale varies even slightly, drowning any burglars inside. Given the circumstances, the team realized that they needed to come up with a solution before the finals, or else the crowd would disperse. But how to break the scale remains a conundrum. Thon is working around the clock to find a solution, as the finals are only four days away. Meanwhile, Vistavo visits the archaeology department to find out how much the treasure is worth. He shows a professor the outside imprints of those boxes. At first, she guessed they were worth roughly 20 million euros, but after closer inspection, she realized they were actually worth much more. Following that, Walter approaches his friend Margaret, a member of M16, the UK Secret Service Agency, and asks for her help, promising her half of the bounty in exchange. He wants her to make up a narrative for him. The next minute, Gustavo receives word of a dispatch from British intelligence. Two members of the agency had been detained at Heathrow the day before. One of them possesses a memory card outlining the bank's plans. This is obviously a fabricated diversion. Thom is still looking for a means to stop the enormous scale from spinning. Lorraine invites Thom to the disco pub for a drink to help him relax. While watching the bartender, Thom had the brilliant idea of using a freezer to deceive the scale. He advocated that atomic activity can be reduced to the point where the weight on the scale would not register. He devised a plan to freeze the scale with 500 liters of liquid nitrogen, which will slow down the scale's mechanics long enough that it won't record their presence and cause a flood while they recover the treasure. However, the crew has to complete the mission with a time limit of 105 minutes before the alarm goes off. To distract the authorities and the irritable, Gustavo, the head of bank security, Klaus hacks the bank's cameras and overall systems. Simon has been given the task of freezing the scale. While Thom, Lorraine, and James precariously make their way inside the vault, Simon successfully freezes the scale beneath the vault's floor. Thom's plan has worked, but the scale is melting faster than expected. So the trio dashes to the containers to get the thing they're looking for. Lorraine then notices, sick Parvis Magna inscribed on a box. As a result, they realized that this is the one with the coins. Gustavo has recovered control of his systems, which had been unintentionally accessed by Klaus days ago as they search for the coins. He orders a strike team to apprehend the invaders after learning in the days prior that the team had already infiltrated the bank to scout it. Walter advises the trio to surrender to the squad because he believes they have been compromised. James then draws a gun on Thom, refusing to surrender and demands the coins, indicating that he is a British government agent. The vault closes in on them, trapping them inside. However, James' diving knowledge allows him to swim to safety, leaving the other two behind. With time running out, Thom feels that tricking the scale into thinking the vault is full of water is the only way to stop the water from flowing into the vault. He instructs Simon to add extra weight to the scale by putting the empty nitrogen canisters on it. But this isn't enough to stop the water from pouring. The team loses communication with Thom and Lorraine assuming they had drowned. Until Simon, as a last resort, hops on the scale with a radio playing World Cup commentary, the last ounce of weight stopping the water flow. The vault begins to leak. Thom and Lorraine manage to elude bank security and make their way to the square, where fans are celebrating Spain's first World Cup victory over the Netherlands. James reports the coins to Margaret. However, the coins turn out to be forgeries with incorrect coordinates. Walter very cunningly replicated the coins, and with the help of Lorraine, interchanged that with the original ones. The originals are still in Walter's ownership. While the team relaxes at St. Tropez, Walter discovers the coordinates denote the Bank of London and further explains their next task, which will begin in two years, when the London 2012 Olympic Games begin. The movie is intriguing, with an IMDb rating of 6.4. The Vault is a standard heist thriller that spends the majority of its running time discussing the character's sophisticated plot, the obstacles that emerge along the way, strategy, and the dramatic robbery itself. If you enjoy thrillers and adventure films, 
as well as those centered on strategy and planning, you will fall in love with this one. What did you think about the video? Do tell us in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed the story. Do subscribe, it helps the channel grow. Thank you.